just like magic. We're back. <laughs> All right. So who who have we got joining us this time? Please introduce yourselves. Let people know what you do at AWS. Shall I go first? I'll go first. Oh. Hi, my name is Richard Perez. I'm a go-to-market specialist for our communication developer services, which includes Amazon uh, Pinpoint, Amazon SES, and Amazon Chime SDK. Hello, uh, I'm Pavlos. I'm working very closely with uh, Richard. I'm a specialist solution architect and uh, covering the same services, except from Chime SDK and focusing on the technical side. Cool. So we heard in that previous segment we were talking to Sylvia and, and the Adrius and the, the fan app. Um, so we heard briefly about how Amazon Pinpoint contributed to the solution, but we're pretty a lot of people on watching the stream who may not be that familiar with what Amazon Pinpoint is. So Richard, could you just give us a, a brief overview? Absolutely. Yep. So Amazon Pinpoint is a multi-channel communication service for message delivery, management, and optimization. This means that marketers and uh, communication developer or developers can use Pinpoint to send uh, communication across different channels, audience segments, campaigns, and really importantly, do so at scale as well. Yeah, it sounds like from the from the, the fan app, just from the, the, the launch activities already, you know, it's getting a huge amount of traffic. So scale is is critical, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and this is something with Pinpoint, Amazon Pinpoint being a managed service, it manages all of that for you. So with the right configuration as the team have developed, it's, uh, it, can, it can achieve that. Cool. So let's talk a little bit about Ferrari and why they chose Amazon Pinpoint. So collectively as a team, we, we, I think it was mentioned earlier, we always work backwards from, from the customer. So we wanted to understand their requirements, the project goals. We shared and discussed some ideas and, and we also presented some fan engagement reference architectures that we had developed over time. And some of those thankfully uh, resonated with, um, uh, with the La Scuderia Ferrari team. Um, and I think it was at that point when they actually really started to understand how Pinpoint could support their, their fan engagement needs around uh, sending campaigns, delivery of content, but understanding the likes and the dislikes as, as fans would navigate through, through the app. I think another part that was really compelling was how <clears throat> Pinpoint could, could integrate uh, seamlessly with other AWS services such as Amazon Personalize, S3, Redshift, as mentioned uh, by Adrian. So I think we really supported um, La Scuderia Ferrari in probably two areas. One is around the support and development of the app, which is, mm -hmm. which is critical to achieve some of their, their business outcomes. But also we supported you know, that, that FANIX experience and, and through the features of Pinpoint, it was, it was a mechanism that they could understand and learn more about the fan and of course, create outcomes that are specific to their needs as well. Cool. Jasmine, do you have a question? <laughs> yeah, so what makes Pinpoint's usage so cool in the Ferrari app? Um, I think being really associated with the app and the launch is pretty cool. Uh, I, have to, mm. I have to say that, I'm delighted with it. I think what makes it cool is I think Pinpoint provides uh, La Scuderia Ferrari real flexibility, whether that's uh, segment, segmentating, segmenting fans based upon their events or doing so like dynamically in real time, um, whether that's the option of perhaps uh, additional channels like really uh, future proofing as, as I think was mentioned before. Um, there's also additional, adi um, additional pinpoint features around campaigns and journeys. So as we start to think around, you know, what's you know what's happening during before after a race off season and all of these different um engagement points i think um could be really really exciting and i also think just pinpoint events is uh, is pretty cool too so here we are capturing the the interactions of the fans during the different times of of the of the season uh, how you the fan is interacting with each other with with the content that's being delivered and we're able to stream that data back into analytics, into machine learning, 
And this helps to better understand the fan, their preferences and what they really like. And of course, Pinpoint is there to deliver the, the next message, the next relevant message back to that fan as well. So we've got an architectural diagram on screen right now, and we saw some of the architecture in the This Is My Architecture video segments that we just saw. So can you walk us through like the architecture of how Pinpoint fits? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. I would uh, I would like to take that, and uh, I want also to highlight uh, that this is an, an example of an architecture which is very similar to what La Scuderia Ferrari has implemented, and uh, we're going to cover two parts of how to use Amazon Pinpoint, and uh, I want to highlight that there is more into that from what we're going to see today. So uh, again, we're talking about uh, the mobile application of La Scuderia Ferrari. So we start from the left where you can see the mobile client. And this is where you have the fun engaging with the mobile application. One of the very important parts of like essentially um, like analyzing the data is to capture them. And uh, this is uh, not only the ease that is offered with Amazon Pinpoint via the AWS SDK, which you can uh, essentially record custom events and then stream them to Amazon Pinpoint. It's also that these events uh, can be used from Amazon Pinpoint to update your customer profiles, but also to trigger experiences. So for example, let's say that you log in or you complete your registration and that could be a trigger to send you an email. So you can see that it offers something more than just recording uh, an event. Beyond that, I want to talk a little bit about scale. So these type of events you can imagine, especially if there is a race, it, it can scale a lot, right? And this a specific API operation pinpoint can take 7,000 calls per second. So like we, we want obviously La Scuderia Ferrari to, to grow and as you grow, they can make use of Amazon pinpoint. Now, continuing uh, from Amazon pinpoint, the events obviously they are useful, but what do you do with them? And what are the options that Amazon Pinpoint gives you in order to uh, later on process these events um, and maybe like use them with other AWS services? So by default, Amazon Pinpoint can integrate and forward these events and stream them using Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose or Amazon Kinesis Data Streams. Then this specific AWS service has the ability to stream them into different other AWS services, either for storage or for further processing. Um, La Scuderia Ferrari has chosen to uh, stream it specifically to Amazon uh, Simple Storage Service, which is an object uh, storage. And then we make use of AWS Clue for an ETL um, job, which is an extract transform load. And this is how you load all this interaction data to Amazon Personalize that you talked before in the previous session. Now, this is one use, right, uh, mm -hmm. where we take these events and we just push them to another AWS service, which make use of it. Again, that improves the funds and the users' experience on the application. But imagine these events, they are not only to be processed from other applications. It is also for people within Ferrari or La Scuderia Ferrari that would like to analyze them, understand better the fans. So this is where you can actually make use of other AWS services like Amazon QuickSight, which is our business intelligence and visualization tool for the same data that can be visualized. Now, we covered the part of tracking and understanding your customer, but Amazon Pinpoint, like Richard said, is an engagement tool, right? We are engaging with the funds. So what are the channels? How can you actually end up engaging with your funds? Allow me to just reveal the next part. So Amazon Pinpoint offers different experiences and channels. The experiences are two. It's Amazon Pinpoint campaigns, which is a single step customer engagement. So you essentially select a segment, so a group of customers, a group of funds that share a similar attribute value, like for example, uh, everyone who attended the last race, right? Mm. Or everyone who has showed interest on in a specific category of uh, updates. And then you can engage with them via channel. La Scuderia Ferrari is currently making use of push notification channel. But bear in mind, there are six channels in total in Pinpoint. Email, push notification, SMS, voice outbound, in-app, in and custom channel. And the other experience is journeys. So journeys, it's a little bit more complex and sophisticated where it allows you to add logic into your communications. So for example, send a push notification, 
if it has not been delivered or opened in, let's say, uh, two hours, send a follow up. So now you can see that you can build these journeys. And just to clarify for our audience, this is not only something that you can do via code. You can do it actually from the console, even if you are a non-technical user. And just to close, and conscious of time, I want to show how you actually can leverage other AWS services to enrich your communication content. And by that, I'm going back to Amazon Personalize, which can be called in real time from your communications. So I'm about to reach a campaign, right? And send a notification to the funds. I can call Amazon Personalize and say, can you please give me for that specific fund, right? On an individual level, can you give me some recommendations of what articles, what videos would be, they be interested about? And then you can embed this in real time on your communications and that will make more relevant the content to the funds. So yeah, I'll, that, make, I'll make a pause here. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say that that kind of ties in neatly with a conversation I had with Stefano Sandrini yesterday where we were talking about personalization in the app, um, you know, potentially going forward. And it was things like we got quite excited with the idea of, you know, we could have, um, you mentioned segmentation, right? So we were like, you know, during qualifying, there's probably a core subset of fans who get really, really interested in qualifying stats. You know, there's the real time notifications come through, the lap times, et cetera. They could potentially be a segment where, you know, we could push additional data to them because that's what they're engaged with. That's what they're interested in. Maybe other fans aren't quite so interested. They'll, they'll read the, the qualifying report later on. Um, and then also there was a, this historical aspect of, you know, um, users who go back and look at historical races, you know, potentially form another segment, right? So then we, you can potentially use that with personalized to drive older content to them. Like, hey, if you watch this race from back in, I don't know, what was the first F1 race? 1950, 1951. Obviously, it wasn't recorded or televised, you know, but going back, say, 70s or 80s, you know, if you watch that race, you may be interested in other races around that time, right? So it kind of all ties into this driving personalized content, but also doing it at scale um, across the whole entire system. You're 100 percent right. And, uh, and and this can be done using Amazon Pinpoint. Uh, it has different levels. So you can start very simple, like with broadcasting, for example. Right. Uh, like, let's say engage a segment or even everyone who is using the application from a channel like push notification for something new. But then you can go even further and start utilizing all these events that you're getting through, update your customer profiles, and then uh, even experiment using A-B testing to identify which message works the best for which customers. So yeah, 100% agree with you. It, we're just scratching the surface here, I would say. Because we also have a question that came in on chat um, from Huda Bird. Will the VPN thing stop Amazon Pinpoint working or does it use the ID device number? If, if that would be the VPN in case of the mobile client, uh, to, um, just to clarify, because VPN could be at any point, I assume they're referring to the mobile client if they're connected via VPN. Uh, I wouldn't think so that this would block them. Uh, I would need to clarify if, if they could clarify where exactly the VPN would be applied, at least on what we're sharing at the moment on the screen. Okay. Well, this is cool. This is, uh, I can see. I also this... think we're talking about um, in, engaging the fans. I think another area that, which is, I think, is really quite interesting is, you know, trying to convert those fans um, that that are more like more leisurely kind of viewers um, with the sophistication of the app, with some of the, the, the you know the personalised content that could be driven. It's a real opportunity to convert those that are partly interested. They're they're curious by it. Mm -hmm. And then we, we can see like an uptake in, in those bands to, to convert them to La Scuola de Ferrari as well. Well, this is great. So it's been an awesome morning. I don't know about you guys, but that's just like, they've been so excited. Actually chatting with somebody from Ferrari was like, wow, never mind an AWS service team members. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And at this point, we never we never all got a hat. I, I noticed. Oh, well, mine's a historical hat, to be honest. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So um, before we move on, is anything that you want to leave the viewers with, um, Pablo or Richard, either of you, or both of you, even? Interesting. We're we're tremendously excited um, by, by this launch. Really excited by um, what. What pinpoint has contributed to uh, to, to the app and 
and we will continue to work and uh you know en enrich it as much as we can so we're really excited so we thanks for the opportunity to speak to you today as well yeah yeah it's been great thanks for joining us okay so thank you so for having us